Gibbs had kindly sent me another quad or drone to review. Uh, this one is absolutely tiny and the thing I really like about it is the packaging's really well done and it's even got a protective sleeve on it so that's pretty unusual. You usually don't get this and I'll take that off and then if you're buying this as a Prezi or anything it would just look absolutely super so they've really protected it this time normally they wind up getting a bit scratched and everything before the review but this one's absolutely lovely uh, as you can see it's a little tiny uh, well it's the smallest uh, quad I've got and um, really looking forward to giving it a go just to see how it compares up to my CX-10s because uh, if it can if it's anything like those then we're in for a real treat with this so let's get it unpacked and see what we get so that's everything unpacked it's a really simple package the nice thing is the actual quad is uh, carried in the transmitter as you can clearly see uh, that's not unusual um, but it's a really nice little feature it means it stays protected you've got four little uh, spare props um, I suspect they'll be called propets or something there's bound to be a, a, a term come out for them from the uh, drone community uh, they're absolutely tiny as you can see and then we've got the actual charger which is a USB charger so you can either use a mains adapter or your computer or your laptop uh, to charge it up onto the actual transmitter itself and um, feels I mean it's quite a plasticky sort of uh, feel to it I must admit uh, but I mean you'd expect that with this but I really like the shape of it and everything there's no buttons at the top here so there's nothing to control here all your controls are down the side here which I guess is going to be for, for your thumbs to use uh, and I run through the controls when I do the full transmitter bit the um, and you are going to need a couple of uh, AAA batteries as well and there's a port there uh, for charging but that's not the same port so uh, I, I won't be using that to charge and uh, that's obviously for a different quad. The interesting thing uh, about the transmitter itself is it's obviously designed for other quads as well because if we just pop it open the actual quad as you can see is so tiny and it comes complete with prop guards um, so you can pop them off uh, they just slide on and off I think oh, there we go they're really simple to get on and off um, and mine's in the camouflage one, so <laughs> if it's not small enough to see, you're going to camouflage it as well. So uh, excellent. And prop guards would actually work. I think you could even you could just about go up to the scene. I think your props might the tops just might catch, but uh, really wouldn't be too much of a trouble. Uh, and they are going to protect it if you're flying it indoors, which is it's really is going to be an indoor flyer. But I shall give it a go outside as well, obviously. Uh, and as I as I was just explaining, the uh, actual transmitter is obviously designed for carrying other sizes of quads. Uh, this is the one that we've got and then obviously does the other ones as well so there it is all the prop guards are off and just want to have a quick look around the actual quad itself it is really cute really tiny as well as you can see so light in the hand um, I'll do a quick measurement of it and I'll put the weight down the bottom there uh, everything is so tight in it I would imagine it flies around this way uh, so the actual charging port which is there and it's just literally two strips that plug into it uh, to charge the battery you can't get the battery very easily uh, but there is four screws there and you could probably take the whole thing apart then and then replace the battery if you needed to but it's not a quick change that's that's for sure it might even be soldered in so uh, but that's really not what it's aimed at for a lot of modding and everything this is actually what it is that's the whole idea of it I would imagine this is to the front because you've got the JJRC written logo written that way and I just flick it on there should be enough charge in there for yeah there is uh, to run the the lights for a little while so probably got the blue at the front and then the red at the back and they're actually quite bright so uh, quite impressed with those that's good and just to get some measurements so uh, the sort of the overall of it I go across there you're looking at uh, just over about 30 millimeters and then Diagonal, we're probably looking about there, so around sort of 31, 30, 32 mil perhaps. It's a tiny, uh, but the thing that gives it to me as a size is put it next to a CX10, which is uh, sort of industry standard, used to be of a small, tiny quad, and now it's absolutely dwarfing this one. So, um, you know, you can really get an idea of the size. Okay, battery on charge, and time to have a quick look through the manual. And even this is obviously quite small to go with everything else on this quad. Uh, it's in two languages, uh, Chinese all that way, and it just basically folds out, and then it's all in English on the other side. Now, I really like the way they've laid it out, because I haven't tried to put Chinese and English together, uh, which is more difficult to read. This is just not 
nice and easy whatever language you're in it's just in your language now I must say I'm impressed with this instruction manual uh, it's nice and clear if you're familiar with flying and everything you'll probably just want this little um, graphic here uh, which is nice and clear the text is slightly small I would say but very legible no problem at all uh, basically tells you what all the controls are and then as you go further through if you're new to flying it runs through all the um, all the things you need to know and it warns you about flying uh, you know take your time learn it's really nicely done translation from Chinese to English is very good uh, it's one of the best I've come across to be honest so a very impressive JJRC is certainly getting it sussed uh, and right the way through uh, how to the calibration um, warnings about your flight environment and everything and the troubleshooting at the end so it's really well done good manual onto the transmitter and normally you would hold the transmitter like this and you'd be using your thumbs to to do the controls and then obviously your thumbs are, will come down and operate the buttons uh, but for this one i'm actually going to use my finger so you can see what i'm pressing and everything so just put the quad on a little stand here uh, and normally you'd have it with it facing away from you and if I, they suggest you turn the quad on first of all with this actual uh, set up you've got the blue leds at the front and the red at the back but i'm just going to put it around like that so that you can see the leds flashing i hope because we do get information back off the leds which which is i think is brilliant with the, all these quads so turn the uh, transmitter on now so you simply press that in you get a beep 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 and then you see the lights flash like mad and then they stopped you need to pull the throttle down to the bottom up and then back down and then now it's bound and you heard it do that beep and then just to show it's bound there we go the props will go it's a, a mode 2 flight so you've got throttle on this side your yaw so in other words the turn is right and left and on this side you've got pitch so it goes forward or pitch back or rolls to the right or rolls to the left Get running down the buttons your button on this side changes the rates and it's got three rates it always starts in low rate press this button once it goes beep beep it's in intermediate or second rates beep 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 into third rates with another press press it again and then it comes back around it's cyclical so it just comes back around to low rates again on this side we've got the flip button so if we press that one when we're flying obviously uh, forward for forward flip back right and left and then once it's done one flip that's it you, you'd have to press that again to get it to flip again these two sets of buttons here uh, these are for trim and uh, you normally have three sets of buttons but this one's only got uh, two settings you've got your pitch here so if it's drifting forward or backwards you can adjust it with these but you'd have to do this indoors or an extremely calm day outside uh, and the other control the other trim ones here are for roll so if it's rolling to the right or the left then you can use these two here to adjust it there's no adjustment for uh, the yaw and uh, the last button to use is this one here and this is a calibration button and I suggest you do this when you first get it or if you've had an accident or it's not flying correctly um, then always use this as your first port of call this will invariably fix anything that's wrong with your quad so hold this down you get a beep 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 a beep sorry and then as you can see it stops flashing after it's calibrated on the right one when you push that one down whoops there we go that's a return to home so it'll start heading back to home or roughly where you set set off from um to be honest i can't really see a lot of sense in that on this tiny little quad because it can never be that far away from you to be honest i would hope not anyway and then to turn that off you can either press it again or you can just use a control uh, any one of the controls uh will uh, any one of the directions here sorry will actually turn that back off and the other one uh, here is headless mode and you simply would press that in so you'd normally have the throttle up a bit and then you press it in but I've just pushed that in and you get if you notice the LEDs are flashing differently they flash two for return to home and they flash three times uh, for the headless mode and headless mode will stay in there until you press down again okay so <laughs> I was going to launch this from down there but <laughs> to be honest once it's that far away you can't see it anyway. having said that you can actually see the LEDs so actually quite good so just going to hand launch uh, it's a quite a miserable day a little bit of sun out but uh, uh, we'll see how it gets on anyway I just I'll give it an outdoor flight and then I'll give it an indoor one this is the very first flight and nice there is a bit of a breeze kicking around <laughs> which is a really sensible thing to come and do with something so tiny that's on in low rates so and that's the yaw in low rates which is virtually hardly even turning that goes up, up into middle rates well, I don't know that it did actually 
Oh yeah, it did. That was middle rate, sorry. The beeps are very quiet. And, whoa, it's one of those nutter ones in uh, yaw that's, uh, when you get it up in high rates, which it's in now. But it is controllable, look. So, you got gentle. You can keep it gentle if you want. I say that wind's getting a little bit up. But if you spin it, gee whiz, that really gets a move on. Very good. I well, know it's totally flyable, that's for sure. It's a lovely little flyer, actually. Just so tiny. <laughs> it's difficult to even keep it with you. <laughs> Just because of the size. Okay, let's try a flip then. Whoa! <laughs> that actually flips quite nicely. Let me just try another one. Yeah, oh, real fast, little feisty little thing, isn't it? <laughs> Which you kind of expect for the size of it. Okay, I've got to try uh, return to home. So I'll just pop that over there. There we go. Oh, we got the flashing LEDs, and it's sort of heading back towards me somewhere or other. Actually, I was saying that it's you wouldn't fly it very far away from you, but actually you would because it's you can see those LEDs so clearly. I'm going to try headless mode now, so simply press that one down. Oh god, it's mad in that third yaw if you just keep it. Well, there we go, that's headless working. And it works well, actually. Yep, lovely. I'll get out of that because I was getting confused there. Huh? <laughs> that's good. Actually, let's just do a little bit of a range test. It's not particularly warm, so I'm not too sure we'll get a lot of battery out of it. Whoa, that's fair old distance. That was pretty good, actually. I was quite impressed with that. Whoa. Oh, dear. Oh, I think it might have actually slightly gone out of range there. Just seemed to cut out. Let's see whether we're still on. Oh no, it's still on. Like I say, it's not much of a wind, but there's just enough to drag it backwards, if you see what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. Well, I don't know whether that's battery or whether that's... Uh, ah, it's... Uh, no, it's absolutely dead. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, so what do I think of it? Well, I think it's awesome. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Seriously good fun. Um, running through any slight negative, I suppose, with all quads I could do with a longer flight time. I was averaging three and a half to four minutes uh, with it, uh, but four minutes very much a maximum. That was indoors when it was nice and warm. Um, but, but three and a half to four was, was fine, depending on how hard you flew it as well. The, onto the transmitter just quickly. I really like it. It works really well, comfortable in the hand. I wish they'd stuck a couple of buttons up the top here, but they haven't, so that, that's fine. They're not difficult to get to. Um, the uh, three rates are very different and the low rate is extremely low so if you're new to flying absolutely brilliant beginner one up into intermediate not too bad and then up in high rates it really gets a shift on and if you hold the yaw over it will spin like mad uh, which is really good but you can keep it nice and tight in and it will just spin quite slowly so it's up to you how much how much control you want to put on it the actual quad itself flew really well had a couple of little bangs and bounces with it absolutely no damage at all it's so light and everything the range i managed to do a few more uh, just flights just to test it for range and i was getting just on 30 meters and it just drops out of uh, a signal and what it does is you get flashing leds if you leg it towards it or just move towards where it is because it just literally starts to drop out of the sky it comes back on it uh, it will uh, reconnect which is brilliant and then also uh, then obviously you can just fly it back to you so so long as you don't go too too far you're, you're fine or if you leg it towards it so you get a bit of exercise with flying the 
tiny little cords. I have just taken it apart actually, just to have a quick look inside. So there's just four tiny little screws, Phillips screws that you have to take uh, take out. And this is one of the very few cords I've got without a Phillips screwdriver, but there's loads of them kicking around. And uh, it is just wanting to show you that it is definitely soldered in the battery. It's a little 80 milliamp hour and it's a single cell. Um, so you would have to uh, uh, get another one and then obviously solder it, solder it in if you needed to change it. But honestly, this thing's going to go for ages, I would have thought. Uh, but no, totally impressed. Really good fun. Uh, if you're a beginner, really good fun. If you're an experienced pilot, just take it with you. To be honest, you could fly this in the car. No trouble at all. Mm -hmm.